I'm sitting with Pastor Heather, who is the Pastor of Growth and Digital Engagement. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our titles are they, longer. Yeah, and they, they change sometimes. <laughs> yes, so. correct. correct. <laughs> um, but it's cool to have you here. Uh, finally, we get to do one um, together, and because you you already done a few conversations mm-hmm. uh, with Pastor Dave Stone, yeah. which were awesome. Um, but now we're we're here and we're talking about uh, just like putting a, a cap on the mm-hmm. generosity series yeah. uh, just because Pastor Jeff is away and um, Dave Stone came and went we're super quick. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I just want to jump right into Jeff's message of week two. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a great message, a lot of uh, the story of Zacchaeus. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, I never really paid much. I know it's terrible for me to say. I never paid much attention to the story of Zacchaeus, um, so it was cool to hear him talk about it and just talk about how like greed is is a real thing and like we, mm-hmm. I mean, we all right. tend to have some greed in us. <laughs> uh, but just like the the story of Zacchaeus and how Jesus called out to him and invited himself over, mm-hmm. and how the people were like. I can't believe he's going to – it's crazy because the text says notorious sinner. Right. Um, and and then Pastor Jeff – Extra bad. He, correct. Yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's really, really, right. really, really bad. <laughs> and uh, just like even talking about that of who Zacchaeus was is kind of uh, – correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, kind of looked at as like a traitor almost. Yeah, definitely in his community. Mm-hmm. And you don't get that from the Sunday school story. Correct. Right? Yeah. No, no, no. You just know he's a bad man who right. – he was a, short. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just the way Jesus invited him in. But that encounter with Jesus, I think, is is the main thing, is that Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, mm-hmm. and he did whatever it took to see him. And yeah. when Jesus saw that and invited himself over, and Zacchaeus really, really uh, just encountered and got to be welcomed in by, mm-hmm. like, I mean, he didn't know it then, but, like, the Savior of the world. Right. And out of that, Zacchaeus is like, take this, take that, take, mm-hmm. like, I want to, I will give back to the people that I've stolen from. Yeah. And I don't know, your thoughts on, like, that encounter with Jesus is so much, so powerful, so loving, so amazing mm-hmm. to the point where you want to right your wrongs yeah. and you want to give generously, not for the sake of being uh, accepted into mm-hmm. a kingdom, into into heaven or just to look good, but in fact, because you encountered Jesus and realized like, oh, the things that I've been doing mm-hmm. outside of God is not right, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and just like, that's just a huge part of Zacchaeus's, the Zacchaeus story that I really love. Yeah. And I think Jeff went on to talk about how like a true conversion and a true encounter with Jesus will will change the way in that case specifically you view greed or money mm-hmm. and I think I think it goes to other things too. Like when you encounter Jesus, if you really struggled with gossip before that, like you're going to be changing the way you talk about people. <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe not right away, but eventually, as God works on your heart, like yeah. whatever you're struggling with, like when you really encounter Jesus, the Holy Spirit really does empower you to have not only like a surface level change, but a heart change yeah. of like why. And so I think that story of Zacchaeus. Um, it's just a beautiful, really clear 180 God yeah. gave us, right? No, <laughs> like literally. This guy who stole from his community and was greedy. And we can kind of read some implications in there, like Pastor Jeff said, is probably lonely, mm, you know, right. in that and being ostracized. But because he encountered Jesus, not only was he like, oh, maybe I'll like look for a different job or maybe I'll be a better tax collector <laughs> yeah, yeah. and not take so much off the top. But it was like, no, like I'm going to turn around and just... Mm give away. Yeah. And I don't know <clears throat> if anyone would have expected him to do that. It's hard right, to know. Right. But just the way that when he encountered Jesus, it wasn't just a little bit of change. Mm-hmm, it was right. a complete life change. Um and I think sometimes we look at generosity in the church and it be- can become like a check mark thing. Yeah, like, okay, correct. we're called to give mm-hmm. and you know, the Bible says it and our pastor keeps saying it. They keep passing the buckets, you know, <laughs> every Sunday. And so we're called to do it. No, I, I don't want to be greedy. Um, but looking at Zacchaeus and some other teachings of Jesus, it's it's way deeper than just checking off that Correct. box on a weekend. It's what is your heart posture yeah. toward money, which is so important in our culture. Right. Right. Like, do you think do you think that people today 
Do you think more people would struggle with greed than maybe back when Jesus was teaching just because of the way like society is set up and Western capitalism, all that stuff? Like you think it's a broader issue? Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah, I definitely think it is because we have an influx, especially because I think it's because we live in California that we can see that when people move to California, specifically like LA, Mm -hmm. their hopes and dreams are to get famous and to get rich. To make money. And to make a lot mm-hmm. of it. I mean, yeah. you have people, you have TikTok influencers that go viral on one clip. And mm-hmm. then the next clip is like, all right, I'm moving to LA. I'm right. doing this thing because <laughs> yeah. I just got offered all these brand deals. Mm-hmm. I just <clears throat> got offered a house in LA. Yeah. Like, they, they, Which, they, yeah, they do get offered so many different mm-hmm. things. And that's like, in, it is enticing. Mm-hmm. And I believe, obviously, that just builds on the greed that you have mm-hmm. and it just keeps building and keeps building. Um, but yet you have people who've lived here uh, specifically like in the, in the film industry or like the, in, I don't know what you'd call it, influence industry, yeah. you know, um, <laughs> it's a whole industry now, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, time and time again, they're not happy. Right. And their, their life is miserable mm-hmm. or, and, and they hate their lives or they, they regret their choices and there's like unfulfillment. Correct. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And so already, I mean, that's just one example of within California of Mm -hmm. people, just like the influx of people wanting that and having that greed inside them. The, the, the fact that they will do anything to have as much money as they can and then to spend it on whatever they want, Mm -hmm. the glamorous life, like all of it. And so I think it is a, it is definitely a bigger issue than it was back then. Um, of course, obviously wasn't, we weren't there. Right. So it could have, <laughs> you know, um, but in the case of Zacchaeus, like he was the one who was making a lot of money mm-hmm. and he was, he, he was looked at as, I mean, people did not like him. Right. People hated him. Yeah. People didn't like his job. Again, he, he was looked at as a traitor as well, mm-hmm. even within, uh, his family, uh, that, that was a possibility that they would reject him. Right. Um, but nowadays it's it's kind of the, somewhat the same, but I think it's more just power hungry, yeah. money hungry. And well, I'd say it's even admirable to pursue success, correct. financial success. Yes, right? yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And it's yeah, exactly. It is seen as like wow, you're going for your dreams, like you're yeah. going for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we see when you get to that level, uh, life is not yeah. any better. It's never enough. It's never yeah, exactly. It's mm-hmm. never enough. And I think what we read with Zacchaeus is that he met the enough Mm -hmm. and he met the person that made him realize like everything that I was doing Mm -hmm. was not giving me any fulfillment, but just my encounter with you Mm -hmm. tells me that I have way more than enough. And it, that transformed his heart to a point where he says, I will give back what I've stolen. I'll give back what I've taken. Mm-hmm. I think it, it's double, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, Like more than this, <laughs> I will do this. And I, uh, as Pastor Jeff was talking about it too, I was like, dude, Zacchaeus must have been loaded. I know, to be able to just turn around and have that much like liquid, I don't know, yeah, gold exactly. or cash or yeah, perfume whatever, or whatever yeah. it was. And to yeah. be able to just be like, here. Yeah, and the whole time I was like, man, he must have, <laughs> I mean, I get why people really didn't like right. him. Because he was, he had everything, he had it all. And I think it's just a, I think people nowadays should hear that story and Mm -hmm. not see like a, oh, as long as I just give, I'm okay, or life is great. Mm -hmm. But that, in fact, it was the encounter that Zacchaeus had and his yearning to see Jesus. Because, yeah, I think the implications that Jeff made kind of has that reasoning of why he wanted to see him Mm -hmm. too. Because, yeah, he probably felt really lonely. Like you can have everything. He had everything Mm -hmm. and yet was probably lonely. Yeah. Um, Probably was discouraged, uh, felt, obviously felt rejected in many ways. And then, of course, the the glamour life doesn't, it's not fulfilling. Yeah. It's a facade. Correct. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. exactly. It's, I mean, we see it all the time. It's a, it's a mask Mm -hmm. for things. Um, and then he meets Jesus and everything changes and he becomes radically generous. Um, and I think that's just the power of who Jesus is. And then the realization of like, whatever's in us that is creating in me the greediness, like Mm -hmm. I want to take that out, um, continuously. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not just a one-time thing. I mean, the encounter obviously is so much, so overwhelming with Jesus, 
that you, that's why you want to do it continuously. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that story is powerful and to really understand, especially nowadays with right. <laughs> the influencing world, which is just wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then like beyond that, it's just so easy to build up our own, I don't want to say wealth, but it's just so easy to spend our money, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. On Amazon. Yeah. It's prime day right now <laughs> yes. today. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're filming this and it's just so easy to, instead of be generous with our money, to spend it it's so easy to spend it in other ways. Correct. Like it blows my mind when I was a kid, like to order something, to have it delivered <laughs> yeah. to your house was like such a big deal. Right, yeah. And now it's like, oh yeah, it'll be here in four hours. <laughs> no, so seriously. It's so easy to 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 look at what we've been given by God financially yeah. and have a million ways to spend yeah. it on ourselves instead of giving it back, mm-hmm. right? And I think to just to end the Zacchaeus thought, I was yeah. just thinking, I know um, both Pastor Jeff and Pastor Dave Stone in his in the following message next week talked a lot about the tithe and like what that principle is. Mm-hmm. And I was just thinking like, it's funny that Jesus didn't tell Zacchaeus like, hey, go give a tenth. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> give right, one tenth, right? right? Yeah, Zacchaeus that's went really good so point. far beyond that. Mm. And um, I think that ties back to what Pastor Jeff had said that the, the principle of the tithe, which mm-hmm. is one tenth, right? Yeah, the yeah, the yeah. first fruits, the first ten percent of what comes into your hand, you give back to yeah. God as like a principle. Um, Zacchaeus like went way, way beyond that. that, and yeah. I think that is an indicator that even for us, that biblical principle of tithe is kind of a starting point. Right. Like I don't know what you think about that. No, I, I, it's it's a good starting point. I think it's, and this may be. Uh, it's probably just my opinion, maybe a little controversial, <laughs> but like the it. the fact that we have to hear the starting point, or the fact mm-hmm. that we have to be like, okay, well, what's the requ- the requirement? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's pretty crazy yeah. because Zacchaeus, like you said, which is a great point. Jesus didn't tell him, "Hey, I need you to give mm-hmm. one tenth. Right. Uh, I need you to give half," or mm-hmm. you know. But it, it was the fact that he encountered him mm-hmm. that said, "I will give all of this." In 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 place of more of you, mm-hmm. um, and I think that's huge. But but to be on the ground level, to be a baby follower, I guess yeah, you know, yeah. like it, it it is a good. That's the other side to it. It is a good understanding mm-hmm. of, to to know. Okay, one tenth. Okay, yeah. I okay, mm-hmm. I can I can do that. But Dave Stone talks about this. Like mm-hmm. our giving, you know, part of our giving has to be sacrificial. Yeah. Um, and what does that look like? And sacrificial doesn't mean we give. Uh, we don't give to the point where we can't live, I guess, or like we can't, but it has to be some sacrificial to where we're really trusting God. No, I think it does bring you to a place of trust. Yeah. Mm. And like, if I can just give an example, um, Drew, you sit next to me at work. So you hear yeah. all of my woes about my house <laughs> and how things are breaking, yes, yeah. <laughs> all things that are going wrong. And it was really interesting because my husband and I had been praying about giving to, we have a special fund going right now for a mm. West Covina building. Yeah. And we've been going back and forth on it and, you know, and, and so we decided to go ahead and give. And the next morning we woke up and we had a slab leak <laughs> in the house uh, and I was yeah. like, it was just really interesting because I was like, I don't know if we had waited one more day to mm-hmm. give to that fund. I don't know if I would have done it. Mm-hmm. And you know, that was, that happened about a month ago and it's, it's turned out fine. Right. And God totally provided and it's yeah. been fine. But it's so interesting that dealing with money and dealing with this concept of generosity really reflects our trust. Yes. Right. Correct. Like it, it's reflecting these heart issues. Mm-hmm. And I think that's so beautiful to watch. I've been able to watch people like as a pastor, you get to watch people grow. That's like yeah. the best. Right. And growing from having a basic understanding of what generosity could be. Yeah. And I've been able to watch friends like get to the point, working up their percentage point to get yeah, to the yeah, tie. Yeah, right, right. And I'm just so excited to watch them continue to go on to like watch God change their hearts and yeah. watch him, watch them trust him. Correct. Right. Cause yeah. it is a, it's a trust issue. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, like as I've grown as a believer and my husband and I have grown, it's just been so cool to trust God with our money and, really get put to the test yeah, correct. <laughs> here and there with that. <laughs> um, I guess I could say be given opportunities yeah. to mm-hmm. trust God with that. And it's just so cool to watch the the growth that happens like, yeah. from that. Like God is just so good. Yeah. And there's, there's I think, essential growth mm-hmm. uh, to that because I think when we go through stuff in our lives, 
it's easy to say I trust God mm. because you're already like in it mm-hmm. type of deal. Like yeah. either a life situation. When things happen to you. Yes, of. right. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But then when you're in control. Yeah, that's a good point. Then it becomes a, then your heart is really showing. Mm-hmm. Then you're like, well, I need this or like, well, I, I yeah. you know, I, I need this. So I'm going to pay for this right. even though you knew or you felt that nudge to mm-hmm. give generously. Um and this is just uh, this is like ideal life too. It's not even within the church. It's like yeah. you get that nudge of like for some reason I feel like this person needs this at yes. this time, and you yeah. don't respond to that. You're not obedient to mm-hmm. God's nudge on that. You're missing out. You're yeah, <laughs> exactly. And it's funny because I feel like it's a um, obviously you're in control of that, and so that's where it gets tough because mm-hmm. now you have the tension within yourself. Yeah. But it's funny because when we do stuff like that, when we're obedient with with God Mm -hmm. in those nudges, God answers a lot of prayers. God answers and does things Mm -hmm. that was, I don't want to say dependent because he can do whatever he wants. But 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 you get to be part of it. Correct. You get to be a part of it and part of that obedience. And because you did that, God can now be like, okay, I can trust you with so much more. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's a very special place to be in. But we we wrestle with ourselves right. and wrestle with the greed at whatever level mm-hmm. it may be with ourselves in that. Yeah. And and some of it is is valid to the sense of whatever the situation may be. You know, it could be like, well, I needed this money to pay off this or I needed this money to do, mm-hmm. go do this. And now you're telling me, you're nudging me to <laughs> give somewhere right. where I'm not going to have this. Mm-hmm. Um, and it could be valid. It could be for survival. It could be for whatever yeah. it is. But when you're obedient to that, God will respond yeah. in a way that's not materialistic, but fulfilling within the soul that you see just God's abundance. Oh yeah, he's he's he loves to bless his people. Correct. And it doesn't always look like the way you expect. Mm-hmm. Like I know when Stephen and I first got married, we um, we had debt. You know, yeah. we both went to private. Christian schools, got great educations, had a ton of debt, you know, get you. Yeah. <laughs> you know how that feels. And so <laughs> we, we did some financial classes through the church and mm. we budgeted and we decided that this tithe principle is going to be super important yeah. to us. And I just yeah. remember that was such a sweet season because we were, we started with giving, we had a ton of mm. debt. And we were trying to find an apartment to live in and we were couponing like crazy. Like I had the binder with all yeah. the coupons. Oh, like people got it. mine behind me and they were like, oh man, it's going to take forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I look back and that was such a sweet season. We felt like we were eating like kings. Like <laughs> I, awesome. I would have like 14 boxes of mini wheats in my cupboard yeah, you know, yeah, because, yeah. <laughs> because we were being faithful stewards and we we're starting with the tithe and it it was just such a beautiful season where I was giving so much food away. Mm-hmm. I was giving away toothpaste. I was giving all this stuff. Yeah. And not because I was making a whole ton of money and I could right. provide for people, but mm-hmm. because God allowed me right. as I was being generous, like with the, with my tithe and with my mm-hmm. offerings, like he allowed me to experience the joy of being generous with others. Yeah. Um, and I love what Dave Stone said, like God will give you the opportunity to be right. generous. Right. And he mm-hmm. talked about how like generosity is like guaranteed joy, right? Like when Mm -hmm. you um, capitalize on those opportunities that God's giving you, like you were saying, like you can let that opportunity go away. Yeah. But when you, when you actually take that opportunity, there is so much joy. It is so cool to be generous. Oh, like it's just so it's fun. I don't know. (laughs) No, no, it it truly is. I mean, obviously depending on your, your heart posture of of how generous you are it's always it's always joyful yeah. because you are literally giving away something that you could so rightly mm-hmm. have kept oh yeah um and i mean that could be a different discussion too cuz mm-hmm. everything is god's you know what you right. receive is god's so yeah. you're like is it you know yeah. but at the same time you know we 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 do work hard um you you do work for your position mm-hmm. so you you do earn your money obviously but when you do have that generous heart, um, it's just it is joyful. Mm-hmm. You are happy, and you and you just like you get to see what God is going to do for either um, the church or people, mm-hmm. and you just get to see Him move in their lives. And you you got to be part of that. Yeah, you're not the savior. No, no that's not yeah. what we're saying. But it's just a privilege to get to be part of God's Correct. work in those in those ways. Yes. Yeah, there's yeah. like. Like we said at the beginning, there's lots of other ways that God will change your heart Correct. to exactly. serve Him, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and but I love your point earlier about how, like, with generosity, like that's a very specific choice you have to make. Correct. You know. Yeah, you really have to 
take in and and really choose like okay yeah i'm going to i'm going to be generous not because i want material wealth like it, it, obviously one of the biggest things in christianity that i struggle with a lot um is the prosperity yeah. aspect the prosperity mm-hmm. gospel right. And where it's like, you just, you sow your seed in this ministry mm-hmm. and, and you will get what you God's want. God's going to reward you. you. God will reward you with, you wanted a Lambo, yeah. you want all this. You're going to get checks in the mail. Correct. They're just going to yeah. arrive. Yeah. I've and heard that. Yeah. I've heard so many <laughs> things and, and I've just seen people who have given mm. out of desperation right. because they needed a miracle or they needed healing and, and they hear that message. And so they do give out of like that desperate right. heart. And then nothing happens, right. and it's it's tough. And it tests their faith. Correct. Right? Yeah, they're and not getting what someone told them God would give. Correct, and and that's where we uh, that side of Christianity does a lot of harm. Mm-hmm. And so to teach like how to be generous, it's not it's not because you want the result of like material success, mm-hmm. but you are giving generously because you've encountered Jesus. Yes. I think that's the biggest thing. I think Jeff said that. Uh, uh, to be was it to be generous is the proof of a relationship mm-hmm. with Jesus, yeah. and that is very true. But what does that technically mean? Because because again, we could teach the prosperity stuff, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, all I have to do is give generously, right. like crazy, for this yeah. desperate miracle that I need. Yep, that's and, my ticket to heaven. And there it is. <laughs> I like got I, it. I got it. And I'm like, no, okay. So that's not <laughs> the point. The point is, is that Zacchaeus encountered Jesus, mm-hmm. and uh, we can go into. Jesus' presence as well, like right. the holiness of Jesus and just like knowing that there's something there's something to encountering Jesus mm-hmm. to this point where, okay, I, I'm going to give generously. Yeah, and encountering his generosity. Correct. Like it, I feel like it all comes back to mm-hmm. the gospel yes. message, right, mm-hmm. of he gave up everything. Like think about Zacchaeus sitting in his riches right. in his home, you know, right, and then magnify that a gajillion times <laughs> to Jesus, like in the glory of heaven yeah. and giving that up, yeah. not only giving that up, but coming and living the life that he lived, you right. know, and dying the death that he died. Correct. Like when you encounter that kind of generosity, it should compel you right. to look around and like, okay, how can I, how can I reflect that? Correct. Generosity, you you right? want to reflect it. You want to do it out of a joyful heart. Mm-hmm. You want to be a cheerful giver, like yeah. Pastor Dave Stone said. I loved his story about him and his wife and oh them giving the uh, food to the yeah. the uh, hotel worker. Yes, and, <laughs> and then right away they're like, "She felt ungrateful. Yeah. She felt this." And and the choice is to be a cheerful giver. Yeah, and, and sometimes you have to choose that, right? <laughs> correct. Oh, absolutely. It's yeah. As I'm saying, all of the you know, like giving and giving. Sometimes you don't want to, yeah. and you do do it out of uh, like I'm obedience. being obedient, but I'm yeah. really angry angry about it. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. And and God's reminding us, hey, be a, be a cheerful mm-hmm. giver because when you are a cheerful giver, then you're, you're not, uh, you don't hold bitterness mm-hmm. and you don't harbor on what you didn't get. Mm-hmm. Instead, you get to celebrate what God is doing yeah. and what that other person or organization or whatever um, is doing. And you get to see the Holy Spirit move. Mm-hmm. I think it's so so powerful. And yeah, I think this series is great because to to uh, circle all of it, circle back and to conclude with this series is because, uh, you know, like I said, the prosperity stuff is is a real thing and mm-hmm. it's and it's affecting a lot of people. Yeah. And it's so unfortunate because people aren't encountering Jesus in those moments. And yet they're they're in a desperate need mm-hmm. um, for a miracle, for healing. And I don't I love this series because we are not telling people give to receive a healing. No, no, no. Give because you've encountered Jesus. Yeah. And be generous because Jesus was generous Mm -hmm. and to reflect his heart and to know that his presence is with you. Yeah. And out of that, yeah, I'm going to adopt this principle of giving generously. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was a great, great series. I don't know if if you thought it was, I know you thought it was a great series. <laughs> I thought it, I thought it was great. Yeah, yeah good. <laughs> Pastor Jeff and Pastor Dave Stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it, it was good. It's a good perspective, and I love how um, there was some practicality to it. Correct. Like, that we have budget coaching. Correct. At one yes, and, all. Yeah, and there's true. other organizations too. If you, if anyone's listening, that's not mm-hmm. connected to our church. Um, but I love that we're like, okay, like if you need to start with just making a budget right. or downloading a finance app, like yeah. being responsible with your money, we're not calling 
people to be irresponsible with Correct. their finances. Yes, right? absolutely. Um, but like starting with making a budget, getting some coaching, getting some encouragement. Yeah. Um, I love that we're part of a church that we we do get to financially bless people who yeah. are in need. Mm-hmm. Like it's incredible. So no, it's kind of fun, like knowing what I know behind the scenes Correct. Like yeah. on staff and watching people's lives get changed and getting to see our teaching team really come at this, but could, what could just be, oh, another giving series, come Correct. at it with such a beautiful perspective Correct. of reminding us that generosity, the heart of it is proof of a life that's encountered yeah. the most generous savior. Right? Correct. And we're just living out what what he already did first. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So um, it was a great series. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, good talking to you. It was great. Yeah, yeah. We'll do more. <laughs> Maybe. We'll <laughs> yeah, <see>. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Thanks, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You got to keep the, you got to keep the Pastor Jeff, <laughs> the Jeffisms. <laughs>